All right, buckle up, because in this video, I'm gonna share several different card making projects that you can make with this one product. And I, guys, you're gonna amaze your friends. It's fantastic, so just hold tight. I am Catherine Pooler, if you are new here. Uh, Catherine Pooler Designs, we invite you to become part of our community. Make sure you hit that button below on YouTube and subscribe to the channel. We go live almost every Wednesday on YouTube with a new card making project to share, sometimes two or three or four, and we have monthly releases where we will go live more often. We always have fun ideas to share and we love getting to know new crafters or new to us crafters leave us a note let us know where are you from uh, what your level of experience with paper crafting is and what you're excited about from this video so ready <laughs> let's dive in the in the forest stencil is a showstopper instant replay in this video we're going to look at how to use the five layers in this stencil to create this gorgeous look how to create a few cards with it and what kind of ink blending brushes you are gonna use, what's gonna work best, as well as how to choose the perfect color combinations. This stencil creates a landscape full background and with something so beautiful, such as an image like this, you're not really gonna need that much more on your card. The sentiments for these cards came from the festive fall illustrated sentiment stamp set and it's a simple way to finish off a beautiful background like this. Before we dive into how to use the stencils, let's talk about color combos. So this stencil image is going to be created by using several different colors together and you're going to want a light and a dark of every color you choose. So the Catherine Puller Designs color wheel is going to help you choose your colors. So for this one, I used a yellow, I used whipped honey and goldenrod, and then an orange apricot and mandarin spice, and then the green is matcha and spruce. Now with the color wheel, you can use light to dark, uh, choosing the lightest and maybe the next shade or the lightest and the very darkest or a medium shade in the darkest. And the colors you use can change the look and feel of the card. For instance, when you use spa colors, it's gonna feel a little bit more sophisticated or vintage, uh, might even feel more fall-like. Those are grayed down muted undertone colors. And then our party line are our very vibrant, highly saturated colors. They're gonna give your cards a more fun feel and are gonna be great for summer and even some spring cards. Spot, co spot colors will be great for spring as well. For layering the stencils, here I'm using this stencil and stamp tool by Sizzix and I'm using their adapters and I'm gonna show you how to use those. You can also just use some tape and tack it down and layer, uh, well, line each layer up one on top of the other and it's still gonna be easy for you but the stencil and stamp tool with the adapters makes it really easy once you have them applied and you can use them over and over. Stay tuned, because we're gonna see this card from start to finish at the end of the video. Okay, so the stencil and stamp tool comes with this aqua attachment. This is for stencils. It also has a clear door. You can remove that and set it aside. That is great for stamp positioning. And then this piece is great for stencils. So Sizzix has a line of stencils that have the two holes in the top of the stencils. So let's take a quick look at how this works with our It's a Jungle Out There stencil. So this is the Catherine Pooler Designs stencil with Sizzix. And you just take the stencil with the two holes at the top and put them onto the pegs on that aqua piece. Super easy. So how do I use a stencil that doesn't have those holes? Well, that's easy too. The pack of adapters comes with 10. We're gonna use five for this stencil. You're gonna take your adapter, put it on the pegs, and then take your first stencil. I found it a little tricky to line it up at first, but then I figured if I take a piece of white cardstock, or any color cardstock really, that is the same size as the stencil, line that up with the stencil and then take the stencil and just put it right onto the pegs. Then that piece of paper 
will stick to that sticky grid. And then every time I do the next layer, I'm just gonna line the stencil up with the piece of paper that is basically being used as a template. Now here is layer one, and I thought for this card, it would be fun to start with reds. So I'm gonna use some reds and pinks. We're gonna start with quartz and rose petals. And I'm using the, oh yeah, here I'm using the medium or the smallest of our large ink blending brushes. For these larger areas, usually I find it a little bit easier to use the large ink blending brush. You just get really nice coverage, it's quick and easy, and there's not a lot of streaking or smudging or harsh lines. Uh, so I really like the big ones. Oh yeah, here, I switched to the large ink blending brush. So stencil number one, I'm going to ink blend all of those open images. They look like blobs right now. I'm using rose petals. No, I'm using quartz, sorry about that. <laughs> Just continue ink blending over the whole first layer. And just like that, we've got gorgeous number one. Although right now it's not looking so gorgeous. Just hold on, it's gonna get amazing. So stencil number two isn't gonna be too difficult to line up. So I'm just removing the first stencil and then make sure you grab stencil two and the writing is on the bottom and right side up so you can read it to make sure all of your stencils are lined up properly. And then once I have that first stencil layer down, it's gonna be just a little bit easier to line the second stencil up. So making sure you line it up with the piece of cardstock guide and the first layer of st the stencil. Next color we're using is Clay Mask in Terracotta. And I could have used Clay Mask and Polished or Polished in Terracotta or Clay Mask in Terracotta any of those three combinations of colors is going to result in a stunning look. So you can see that color wheel is so useful. It just takes the guesswork right out of color combinations for you. So I used the smaller of the two large ink blending brushes for this one and it worked really well. And I really love stenciling and ink blending larger areas like this because of the shading that you can get. It just looks really artistic and adds some really great dimension to your projects. So here is stencil number three, just adding on that adapter, lining it up with the cardstock and my previously stenciled images. So as you continue layering, it gets a little bit easier to line everything up and just sticking that onto the adapter. And then I'm moving on to color number three. I decided to go with green blue for this, a little twist. Instead of doing just straight green or yellow green, green blue is gonna look gorgeous. So winter green and sea glass. So one important thing to note with this stencil in particular, uh, probably all stencils really, but especially when you have larger areas, it's easy for your brush bristles to slide underneath the stencil, and then you're gonna get ink blending in places you don't want it to. You may want to hold down the stencil with your hand to make sure that it's staying flat against the cardstock. And also don't press down too hard with your ink blending brush. So use a light hand so that those bristles don't slide under the stencil. Oh my gosh, look at that guys, what? This stencil creates a stunning masterpiece for your cards and it is so satisfying and pleasing to work with. Just every time I use it and I pull back that layer, it's a surprise. It's been so much fun. And the design process for this, let me tell you guys, it, it was a little intense. <laughs> so it went through a lot of iterations to get it just right. And we are tickled with how it came out. So this fourth stencil is a little trickier than the first three to work with because it has all those second colors 
on one stencil. So I find it easiest to use some post-it notes to mask off my different sections. So on my wintergreen trees, I want to do all the sea glass layers. So using those post-it notes gives you a boundary or a barrier or a mask so that you don't bleed into the other stencil bits. So really easy to do. Uh, just take a little bit extra care when doing this layer. So now we're going to stencil rose petals over all the quartz trees. Some of these fourth layer pieces are pretty small. So this is a situation where you could grab the detailed ink blending brushes. These come in two sizes. The pack, you get four brushes, two small and two extra small. Make sure those bristles don't slide under the stencil. So a light hand, a nice circular or padding motion is gonna be great for this. And then I also really like on this stencil where you can get some shading in there. This is a little bit different look than stamping. Uh, so layering these colors on and getting that shaded look. You can also blend different colors at the same time if you want. So if I wanted to do the rose petals and then maybe come in with a darker orange or a darker maybe a red purple or uh, even a darker red, you could get the bottom of that tree even darker and just create some really interesting looks. You also may have noticed I just took my ink blending brush and rubbed it off on a paper towel. So my ink blending brushes mostly have been used with party ink colors. Those are very highly saturated colors. They're very vibrant. And when I mix them over with the spa, I wanna make sure I get most of that color out of my brush before going into the new color. And then especially if I'm going from spa to party, the gray undertone of the spa inks is gonna be a little bit trickier to get off of your brush. So then when you go into a party color, it might kind of gray it down a little bit. Well, wait till you see the next layer, the fifth layer, the final stencil. This is the tree trunks. So I'm choosing icing on the cake for this one. And I'm using a small ink blending brush, not the detail, but the smaller of the large ink blending brushes. And this stencil especially, I found a light hand. Make sure those bristles don't scoot up underneath that stencil and just cover the whole stencil with icing on the cake and ta-da the reveal what do you think it's a stunner i was uh editing a reel and randall came over and was looking at it and he saw the reveal reveal part and he was wowed so i love it when it wows people because then i don't know i had so much fun making this and then I bring joy to others by sharing the art with them. And it's it just full circle. And then did you guys notice <laughs> I missed some of the red orange trees or I missed all of the red orange trees. So no worries. I have my adapter on there and I'm just going to line that stencil right back up and it's going to work perfectly. I'm going to do terracotta on all of the red orange trees and add that detail and it's just gorgeous. So now what? <laughs> Let's make a card. Really don't have to do much with this background because it really speaks for itself. I think the fall plaid paper is gonna go beautifully with this. We have sangria, peppermint scrub, orange peel, ginger, eucalyptus macchiato cargo it's a really great pack and then the rectangle dies these are going to die cut your paper it gives a nice little beveled edge and you know it's the right size and it's going to be clean so i can use the largest size on the background and there's a little bit where that adapter kind of cuts into the design with the rectangle dies it's gonna cut off right about where that line is. So if you want this design to fill your whole card, you can, 
or you can cut it down with your paper cutter about an eighth of an inch or a quarter of an inch, or you can use these layering dies. So I decided to use the second largest for the background and then the largest die for the plaid. And then for paper saving, take one of the other dies, a smaller one, and cut the center out, and then you can save that piece for another project. I usually forget to do this, or I'm just creating live and I don't wanna take the time, but if you're crafting at home, this is a great way to make your paper go further, because I know we're all paper hoarders, right? So this is a way to hoard more paper. I'm sure you needed that tip. <laughs> so I'm gonna assemble the card. And then once I had everything assembled, I didn't love the terracotta or the ginger uh, plaid with the background piece. So I switched it out to cargo and I think that one works perfectly. So we're gonna go simple with finishing this card off. The festive fall stamp set festive fall sentiment stamp set. These greetings are gorgeous. So we took each one and did some really fun fonts and added some extra oomph to each one. We added some images and flourishes and just, it's such a fun sentiment set. For this card, I decided the very simple thanks sentiment die cut in black and white was gonna be perfect. And I decided to add this to the bottom right hand corner of the card and just like that, we're done. Do you love this stencil? <laughs> it will be available in our shop on August 14th and it is gonna be an amazing addition to your craft stash. So before we go, I wanted to make one more, this time with party colors. These are very vibrant, very highly saturated colors that scream party. So we're using do si -Do Melanicin in the park. And this little part here you saw at the beginning, uh, but just popping it in here again, that in the park just looks stunning. And then we'll peel that off and it's time for layer two. And layer two, when I, put the stencil on there. It didn't quite exactly line up with layer one. I'm not really sure why, because I didn't move the adapters at all. So it was kind of weird that it was a little bit off, but it's, it's super sticky. easy to fix. So I just peeled the stencil off of that adapter, realigned it, and it actually was really easy to realign when I had the first layer stenciled already. So that's another great way to add these stencils to the adapters. Do it as you're stenciling. So just um, super easy to line up that way. Okay, and then, oh, that melon ice looks so pretty. Melon ice is one of my favorite colors. It's just such a unique and fun, beautiful, vibrant, amazing color. So looks really cool on here. And then do si -Do, which is a coral color. And then those second colors are gonna be well, how do I know what they're gonna be? <laughs> Just grab my color wheel. And the darker colors for do, -Si -Do are Coral Cabana and Sa uh, Samba. And then in the park, we're gonna go to Mardi Gras. And then Melon Ice is Martini. So we've gone over a lot of things in this video. If you are new, I hope you will join us again. Be sure to hit that subscribe button. Uh, we are always inspiring and educating here on YouTube. And when you like and share and subscribe to our channel, it tells YouTube that you like our content and that it's good and valuable. And then they push us out to more people and it helps us grow the channel. So we really, really appreciate that. And then of all the things we've covered on today's video, Leave a comment and let me know what your favorite thing is or what you are most excited about with this stencil. With the colors I chose for this one, I'm running into a slight issue that is a great piece of information to be mindful of. On this last layer, because you do all of the top layers together, uh, I guess one way you could do it is do one color and then go wash your stencil and then do the next one because what was happening 
was that I had red on my stencil and then I was adding green. And when you take the color wheel, you see red and green are across each other on the color wheel, which means they're complementary colors. And when mixed together, they turn to brown. <laughs> and that's not something that we want on this particular background. <laughs> so I think washing the stencil would work. The only drawback of that is making sure it's super dry before adding it back to your project and stenciling the next color. So it may take a little bit longer. You can also, before you move on to another section, use your blender brush to try to get most of the ink off of the stencil material. I also used a napkin to try to clean up the stencil in between colors. And also the small detail blending brushes are gonna be really nice and you're gonna be able to get more precise placement of your brush and avoid picking up and cross contaminating those colors. I want to know what kind of colors you guys are thinking about using with this. Uh, I wanna do some monochromatic ones, maybe some blues, some greens, one with just pink would be really, really pretty. And now for the final layer, the tree trunks. And I thought I would try something a little different here. So I grabbed one of our metallic inks. This is rose, rose gold. We also have platinum, we have silver, gold, champagne. They're all gonna look gorgeous. And our metallic inks are pigment inks. So pigment is like a paint. It's heavy and it's thick. The application of this ink with the blending brush is gonna be similar to the water-based dye ink, but you may have to go over it a couple extra times just to get a nice even coverage and make that really opaque. But it's a really beautiful effect. And then you're gonna to want to spray it with a fixative to set the ink so that it doesn't smear. And then finishing this off with a simple large high dye. All these supplies will be linked below for you so you can check them out there that high is absolutely perfect for this and it doesn't compete and it doesn't steal the show from that gorgeous background. Well I hope you enjoyed this product and these projects. Our fall festival release hits the shop on August 14th. If you're a Stamp Nation member you get to shop early and your order will ship first. August 13th at noon is when those products go live in the shop for you. Thanks for joining us today. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel, hit that thumbs up, and leave us a comment. We'll see you again really soon.